You're listening to a message from Gateway Church Geelong. We hope it blesses you. For more information about Gateway, visit gc.org.au. You know, the text that we're going to look at today is from the book of Mark. If you would like to turn, it's the amplified version, Mark chapter 8, verses 22 to 25. This morning, I want to talk to you about breaking your pattern. Breaking your pattern, verse 22. Then they came to Bethsaida and some people brought a blind man to Jesus and begged him to touch him. Taking the blind man by the hand, he led him out of the village. And after spitting on his eyes and laying his hands on him, he asked him, do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking around. Then again, Jesus laid his hands on the blind man's eyes and the man stared intently his, and his sight was completely restored and he began to see everything clearly, even what was at a distance. And he sent him to his home saying, do not even enter the village. This morning, I want to talk to you about breaking patterns. It says that then they came to Bethsaida, they brought a blind man to Jesus and they begged Jesus to touch this blind man's eyes. I remember when I was in India several years ago now and I remember seeing a blind man. People brought him over to me. They led him by the arm. And it was in a remote village where we had to travel many hours to get there. It was a village that was so remote, they had actually never seen white people before, that when the children actually saw us coming, they ran and they hid. This was a village that was so remote, but it was so desperate for miracles. This man being led by a couple of men, I saw him confined to the natural. I saw a man who was blind, confined to his situation, confined to his blindness. Other people leading him, other people making patterns for his life. You know, I started looking this week and I thought, what is it like to be blind? What does a life look like for somebody when you're confined by your sickness, when you're confined by your ailment? And I started to look at a man who was in solitary confinement. This was a man where he was separated from the main prison. He remained alone in a windowless cell. He couldn't see anything for sometimes up to 23 hours at a time. And what he would do in that situation, being locked up for 23 hours in solitary confinement, he started to take control of a situation that was in control of him. And he started to pace up and down and turn around, pace up and down. He only had a small cell, but to try and get some control in his confinement, he started to pace up and down. It would be one, two, three, turn, one, two, three, turn. And by this, he was forming a new pattern where he was being confined in a situation. Making patterns, forming patterns, creating patterns in his confinement. And this was the statement that he said, so I could ensure at least the things I could control, I would control. For one hour each day, he would be let out of solitary confinement. It wasn't around the general public, it was just a bigger space. And you think that maybe he would have looked at the the trees, maybe he would have looked up to the sky. But where in solitary confinement he formed a pattern, as soon as he got out for that one hour of the day, he just increased the, his pattern. So no longer was it one, two, three, turn. It was one, two, three, getting up to eight to 10. And then he would turn. Instead of walking, he was sprinting. He was embedded in this pattern that he was creating to gain some type of control in a situation where he was confined. When I start to think about a man who is blind, I start to think about confinement. I start to think about how we form patterns, how we make patterns, how patterns are chosen for us when we can't see clearly, when we can't see at all. 
patterns start to form so that we can be insured of some type of control. You know, a normal brain has branches and activity like budding trees in spring. Touch and social interaction is nourishment to our brains. It acts like a fertiliser to our lives. But the brain of someone in prolonged solitary is a harsh winter. All leaves, buds and activity is frozen, barren and trapped. So when I think about this blind man, I think about a harsh winter. I think about a man who is trapped. I think about a man whose activity has been frozen in his life. You know, this man in solitary confinement said this, when I was finally released, interaction with people close to me became so frightening and overwhelming. I couldn't accept the proximity of people three steps away from me. You see, as human beings, we require two things, social interaction and meaningful activity, relationship, purpose. By doing these things, we learn who we are and we learn our worth as a person and an individual. But when we are isolated, when there is distance, deprivation starts to set into our mind. It sets into our decision making. It sets into our emotions and forms new patterns that God never intended us to walk in or be in. You know, after 10 days in solitary confinement, questions started to come to his mind. Paranoia and violent thoughts began. In confinement, he said, there's a vacuum with nothing to distract. The brain begins to play tricks on you and you're more sensitive to the sounds around you, people walking around you. And because of this, he started to develop a pattern of shaking all over his body. So when we look at this blind man, we need to understand what isolation does, what isolation means, what confinement actually means says, and what it brings to a person's environment and mind. Then came some people. Nothing is said about them, but these were no ordinary people that came to this blind man at Bethsaida. They came and led the blind man. In their culture, because he was blind, he was unacceptable. He was untouchable, unclean, yet they led him to Jesus. They were prepared to take a chance. They were prepared to go beyond themselves. They were prepared to extend their reach. That's what Jesus says to us, to go out into all our world, not the world you like, not the world we feel comfortable in. Have we ever been in a place where we were waiting around praying for them to come into church? If you're going to be effective, you can't change what you can't touch. And you can't touch what you're not reaching out for. You have to be prepared to extend your reach. Are you prepared to extend your reach? Mission for purpose. Am I prepared, God, to extend my reach? Mission for purpose. Have we got comfortable in our lives that we've stopped being out in the field and gleaning? We've heard in the prayer meetings this week, people's hearts crying out to God, let not our hearts grow complacent. You see, gleaning is an incredible thing. When we look in the book of Ruth, gleaning is the act of collecting leftover crops from farmers' fields to give to the poor. Gleaning is slow, it's labour intensive, but it's one bit a day at a time. Holy Spirit, we need to understand from the Holy Spirit today, when you're gleaning in the field of God, there's always supply for you to reach in to the hearts of people. He is your supply this morning. The Holy Spirit is your ability. When you are gleaning in the field, God always has a supply for you to reach into another man's heart. He turns winter into spring. The supply was in their hands for the poor. The Holy Spirit already has your supply to all who are poor in spirit. 
poor from a lack of strength, poor from abuse, poor from judgment of society, poor from blindness, poor from lameness. For the Lord would say, if you extend your reach this morning, mission for purpose shall be reached, included, restored and set free for those around you in your community. I'm continually learning how to glean, how I need Him to extend His reach to me. In my times of my life, how I need Him to extend His reach to me so that I may be filled to overflowing, that His reach extends to my will, willed with overflowing. You know, this week I've been asking the Holy Spirit so many times. Holy Spirit, would you teach me about the compassion Jesus had? Jesus, you overflowed it to the woman at the well. It was free of judgment, but it was full of truth. Holy Spirit, I'm conflicted as my heart struggles. My thinking struggles at times with showing compassion, how you showed compassion to your people. Would you teach us, Holy Spirit, about the compassion of Jesus Christ, how he had it towards Matthew, the tax collector? Matthew was ostracised in society, in religion, to the educated, but you asked him, Jesus, to come follow you. Follow you into truth. Truth that never compromises holiness. How did you do that, Jesus? How did you show grace? How did you show mercy? But you never compromised on the truth of holiness. Mission for purpose. Help me, Holy Spirit, to surrender to your purpose. Holy Spirit, I don't want to build a routine. I don't want to build a pattern around what is not obvious to me, but it's clear to you. This blind man at Bethsaida, he didn't expect to see. He had his daily routine. He had his daily pattern that he was continually forming to cope. Why is it that I should prepare for routine? Like this blind man, he could have said, why should I prepare for this? Why should I prepare for change? Why should I expect something different in my life? I'm not challenged by my life because I always end up in the same spot. But where there is Jesus... There is always a new way, there is always a new path and there is always a new pattern. The men that led the blind man to Jesus were initiating a new pattern, not only in the life of the blind man, but the life of their own selves. They were initiating kingdom culture into earthly culture. He went against society, but was driven for his kingdom culture on earth. Mission for purpose. They understood Jesus. They understood kingdom. We want to be a part of the miracle. But do we want to be a part of the process? Everybody wants to be a part of the miracle. Wow, blind eyes are open. Wow, the lame's rising. Wow, that emotional sickness, that depression is totally lifted up. Look what God has done. But what if God asks you to be a part of the process and lead that depressed person into all truth who is Jesus? It might not fit into what's comfortable for us. We want to be part of the miracle. But the Holy Spirit is asking us this morning, do you want to be a part of His process? The process can be messy, difficult at times. But my question is, what is it that I can do today? I don't want to keep looking at what I don't have. But if I understand, if I glean under Jesus, I glean from the Holy Spirit, who is my supply. You know, this blind man at Bethsaida, he couldn't locate God by himself. He couldn't locate Jesus that day. 
What are you finding hard to locate in God? Is there an area of sickness and emotion that you're finding hard to locate Jesus in? Holy Spirit, help us to locate Jesus in our sickness. Help us to locate faith where there is unbelief. When we're finding it hard to get out of our pattern, finding it hard to locate the faith, finding it hard to locate belief, finding it hard to locate strength. Holy Spirit, help us. Send people to come and lead us. Send people to come and encourage us this morning when we're finding it hard to locate God. Send your people to rise them up full of the Spirit. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's by the Spirit of the Lord. That's what we're needing. Holy Spirit, we need your Spirit to locate faith when our hearts are so unbelieving. Taking the blind man by the hand, he led him out of the village, leading him out of his pattern. And after spitting on his eyes and laying his hands on him, Jesus said to the blind man, do you see anything? These group of people reached him and led him to Jesus. Now Jesus is leading him out of his pattern, his pattern that had lost expectation of seeing clearly. His pattern of disappointment, his pattern of abuse. When trauma, events, confusion happens in our lives, we form patterns that we walk in daily because we can't see Jesus clearly. We can't see restoration quickly, clearly. We can't see deliverance clearly, freedom clearly. So we compensate for what we can't see clearly and we form patterns. But Jesus, the Son of God, mighty and splendour and victorious is He, is taking us daily by the hand. He's reaching into your heart where we have formed patterns of comforting, of of. Uh, comforting our misery, God is trying to confront our misery. Where we have formed patterns of comforting our misery, God is trying to confront our misery because He wants to heal us. He wants to set us free to purpose you to see clearly He's reaching you. He's including you. He's restoring you this morning. You know, there are moments though. Why did this blind man, why did why couldn't Jesus just help help healed him in the village? Why did he have to go out of his village into this place of remoteness, this place of isolation? You see, there are moments in all of our lives when your growth, when your growth in Jesus Christ depends on the times and the seasons in isolation. Isolation for preparation. He took him out of his village alone in a desert. Isolation for preparation. The very place Ruth felt like she was an outcast, in the end, she ended up owning the field. The very place where she was an outcast, in barrenness, she learned how to run that field where Boaz would never have understood what she understood gleaning. She ended up owning that field. Being in the field, she understood the field. Isolation in God is the place of waiting on Him, pressing into Him, seeing clearly what we didn't see before. Don't ever think that God would bring you somewhere where, we, where He did not have a provision for you. Do not ever think that God would bring you somewhere where He did not want to provide for you. Jesus is talking to the man, healing him, but He's teaching us. 2,000 years later, He's teaching us at the same time. You see, I thought when God encounters us, when God speaks to us, empowers us with His mighty hand, I thought our future was set. We could see clearly in that moment of encounter and we just know, I can see everything clearly. God, you've got me. My future is set. My purposes are clear. We believe our future must be sewn up. 
And He touches our eyes and He asks us, us what we see. And even though we're encountering Jesus, we can't see clearly. It's like we can kind of see men like trees walking. We, we, it's murky. It's, we can't see. And then you think, well, God, I had this encounter with you. I encountered you. I, I saw so clearly. But now time's passing and I can't see clearly as I did. What happens when we can't see him clearly? We know we've encountered him. He's set us apart. He's called us out but we can't see clearly at times. It says, and he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking around. What do we do when we can't see clearly? When we can't see clearly for just long enough, what do you do when you feel like you're doing all the right things, but you still feel grounded? You're passing the test, but you still feel like you're being isolated. No longer does it feel like protection anymore. It feels like punishment. For some reason, you keep trusting me with struggle. Think about the blind man, his response. I kind of see people, but not clearly. It's a struggle to see clearly at times. And this is something that I'm, I'm so thankful for when the Holy Spirit showed me this. You see, the blind man, when Jesus said to him, said, what do you see? He touched his eyes. What do you see? I see trees. I see men like trees walking. You know, we often think that when God puts us in isolation, we think that we're doing something wrong or you're holding things up, God. But this is what I felt the Holy Spirit say to me. When you're in times of isolation and you can't see clearly, when you see men like trees walking around, it means that you need to spend more time with Jesus until you see men and women clearly without all the appearance of this world around them and you start to see them as I see them with grace and mercy and power. You start to see, you start to see ability in them where not the world sees ability in them. You start to see talent in them where the world has discarded them. When you spend more time with Jesus, the appearance of the world comes off them and you start to see them as Jesus sees them. When we're in isolation, it's not punishment. It's a time for us to press into God. It's a time to learn the lessons of when we are in isolation? What lessons is the Holy Spirit teaching you? Can you sow good seeds in a bad time? Can you sow good seeds to someone who hurt you when you're in times of what feels like isolation? Isolation is for preparation and we need to be careful what we sow in the field. You just don't know what isolation is going to lead to. Here's the key. This is not a time to distance yourself, but to press in. And he looked up. That's what it said. The blind man said he looked up. It's easy to look down, but can you keep looking up when you're in isolation, when you're in preparation? It's easy to look down and see hopelessness because of the time frame, but can you press in? Can you wait on him? Can you extend your reach and fight through the opposition, the hopelessness, the weight, the obstacles? I can't see clearly, yet I'll press into you to extend my reach that I may see more clearly, Jesus. Can you keep looking up to Him? Because as you do, as you wait on Him, as you keep trusting Him, you will see clearly. Like the woman with the issue of blood, can you keep reaching through the struggle until you see Jesus so clearly? Can you reach through the obstacles, that extra reach that touched the hem of His garment? And as soon as that woman touched the hem of His garment, without Jesus knowing, He stopped and He said, power and virtue have flowed out of me. When we don't give up in preparation time, 
You will touch the hem of His garment and power and virtue will flow through you. You know, this week I was preparing and I felt the Holy Spirit say, come on, I want to I talk to you. And I had this song on that we're going to play later and, and He just started working on some things in my spirit. There was just some things that needed to come out of my mind, my will and my emotions. Things that started off so clear for purpose because of time, because of preparation, because of waiting. You see, I thought, I thought that maybe God didn't want that purpose for me, that maybe He didn't want that calling for me. I knew God was with me. I knew God loved me. I knew God was all around me. But then comes the issues of when we're waiting for our promises in God. The time starts to stand still. Disappointment starts to creep in and we start to distance ourselves from believing that what God has promised us, He shall do. And we start to form new patterns in our walk, in our life. But this is what the Holy Spirit said to me. You, I knew He hadn't left me, but I thought He had left my promises. I knew God hadn't left me, but I thought He'd left my promises. And what the Holy Spirit delivered me from was that wrong thinking of unbelief because what He starts, He always finishes. No matter what the time frame, no matter what the environment, no matter what people say, no matter how much you can't see clearly, what God starts, He will finish. He hasn't left you. He hasn't left your promises. He hasn't left your calling. God's Word is yes and amen. He never left my promises or my calling. But what He spoke to me about is that I had to go through the struggle so I could see people more clearly. If I don't understand struggle, how can I minister Jesus to struggle? If I don't understand disappointment, how can I minister to disappointment? If I don't know weariness, how can I minister to weariness? If I don't know trauma, if I don't know abuse, if I don't know hopelessness, how can I minister out of what I don't know? God, I knew you never left me. But now I know you never left my promises. You just needed me to spend more time with you like the blind man at Bethsaida. Jesus could have healed him the first time. It's not like he needed a second go. It's Jesus. But what Jesus is telling us 2,000 years later, if you're not seeing clearly, it's because I want to spend more time with you. I need to see people clearly. Holy Spirit, help me. I need to understand how to minister to depressed minds when there is no sound mind. How do I do that, Holy Spirit, if I don't understand struggle? There's process that comes with the promise. There's process that comes with the promise. He wants you to understand the dry bones, but not get comfortable in them. He wants you to under the storm, understand the storms, but He also wants you to know how to get to the other side. Do you believe that God gave you promises? Do you believe that God gave you a vision? Because if God gave you a vision, you need to press in and pursue it. Don't give up halfway just because time has gone beyond what you thought it should have done. Verse 25, then again, Jesus laid his hands on his eyes and the man stared intently. His sight was completely restored and he began to see everything clearly, even what was at a distance. You know, the blind man that I saw in India when they led him to our group, his eyes were completely white. And when we prayed for him, not my ability, 
not my resource, not my talents, not my giftings, but not by might nor by power, but because of the Spirit of God that is within you, that is within me. As we prayed for Him, I saw God totally set His eyes free and what was blind was total sight. It flicked from white to blue in front of our eyes. God is never so real when we see His promises come to pass. Do you believe that God gave you a vision? If God gave you a vision, if God gave you a promise, you need to pursue it. In verse 26, it says, And he sent him to his home, saying, Do not even enter the village. You know, I never understood this. And this is what I felt the Holy Spirit show me. Don't go back from what I've showed you just because you can't see clearly, but extend your reach. What do I mean? He told the blind man, You've been healed now. You can see in your spirit, you can see in the natural. Don't go back to that village. I thought it was maybe don't go back to unbelief or don't go back to that same pattern. But I started to realize that when God shows you a promise, when God shows you a vision in the spirit, you naturally want to push forward. But this is what happens. Remember the guy that was pacing up and down? So the Holy Spirit shows you a vision. He shows you a promise. You start walking towards God. You start extending your reach. You start going forward. But then suddenly your mind and your will and emotions and all the stuff that's happened to us generationally, we start to creep back in our souls because where we could see clearly, you know, the encounter's not quite so strong now and it's starting to get murky. And because we can't see as clearly in the Spirit, we start to return to what we're comfortable with. We start to retract to what we know and we start to get caught in our mind, our will and our emotions. He was saying that to the blind man at Bethsaida, don't go back to your place of pattern. Don't go back to your place of comfortability. Don't go back to what you knew, but keep extending your reach forward for what I've showed you in the Spirit. I'm going to continue to show you and continue to show you, but you must renew your mind. You must renew your mind, your will and emotions. Your mind and your will emotions has to come in alignment to what the Spirit of God has showed you. Otherwise, it will be pulling you back as soon as you start waiting for things to move. God didn't come through. Well, here I go back. I'm feeling disappointed. Here I go back again. And your spirit's grieving inside saying, just keep reaching, keep reaching, keep reaching, keep pursuing me as you do. I'll start to let you see clearly for the next season of your life. Press into Him, wait on Him because He's causing you to see clearly. Your spirit has seen now. You need to press into Him to allow Him to now work on your mind, your will and your emotions. They have to catch up to your spirit. They have to come under the control of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help my emotions come under the control of the Holy Spirit and His pattern. We talked about breaking your pattern. But as we press into the Holy Spirit, I declare that you will see the pattern. See the pattern of the Holy Spirit. See the pattern of purpose for mission. That every single person may be reached, included and restored. And just like that group of people went beyond their culture to kingdom culture, I declare that that's what we start pressing into. That's what we start realising is the rich source of our supply, the power of the Holy Spirit. May this song bless you this morning.